I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Shiroz Akram and Boydou Sa'i. Thanks yeah. a million for joining us, lads. We're here to talk about inclusion and diversity in sport. Boydou, you once said that you consider yourself to have three families, a Liberian one, an Irish one, and a GAA one. Tell us about your GAA family. Um, I suppose my GAA family would be, you know, like growing up, like growing up you have your club and then you have your county. So, you know, sometimes you're separated, sometimes you're with your club or you're with your club and then you're just with your club. You don't yeah. get to see your county lads. And then sometimes you're just with the county lads and you see them all the time. So at the moment I'm with the county and literally you see them more than you actually see your own family. So basically they're like your brothers, you know, you're, you're tight. You're like real tight knit, you know, they know a lot about you, you know a lot about them as well. So literally they would be considered my third family, if you put it that way. Is it the same for you? Definitely. Um, really? When I was involved with the Me Under 21 setup, like yeah. I, I said it as well, we're like a band of brothers, you know. Um, like Baidu touched on it, you, you know everything about each other. That's outside of football, so if anyone needs a hand with anything, you're giving them a hand. And if you need a hand, they're giving you a hand. You know, people are going out of their way, so um, it's, it's a huge part. Talk to me a little bit about your childhood. childhood. You were born yeah. in Liberia and yeah. you didn't come to this country until you were eight. Yeah, yeah. What do you remember of those first eight years? Um, you know, like, I suppose, you know, growing up for me was, it wasn't really growing up, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't have much of a childhood at all. So for me, it was, I was being moved around so much because yeah. there was a bit of a civil war going on. It was just ending at the time. It was actually just ended when I was leaving Liberia, but it was going on when I was around six, seven. My mother passed away when I was six. And after that, I was just being moved around a lot. So. My memory is just being living with one of my sisters and I live with one of my brothers. And then my uncle coming over and asking me, do I want to move to Ireland? And it was an easy answer. So you came over here at the age of eight. Yeah. yeah. First impressions? It was freezing and I've never experienced cold like that before in my life. You know, you're coming from heat, like it could be raining, but it's still hot. And that's all I know on either rain. We two two seasons, rainy season and sunny season. And that's it. So landing in Ireland and you experience the cold breeze hitting your face, um, it, was, it, was, it was a different shock. Is it slightly different for you? You arrived when you were four. Yeah. I, 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 <clears throat> I don't remember anything of my life up till the age of four. What, what memories do you have? I have very little memories yeah. from Pakistan, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I, remember, I remember bits and pieces. I remember incidences that had happened. That was about it. I went back there three years ago. It was my first time going back. It was like seeing a country for the first time again. Really? Um, so going back, I like visiting my relations, you know, you, you stay in touch with them, but where we lived, everything just changes. The cities, towns, everything has changed. Um, and then my view would completely change as well. When I first came over, I didn't think it was as bad, but then when I went back as an adult, you're looking back and Jesus, luckily I did get out of here and I've got a better lo life and an opportunity at life now that we've moved to Ireland. That was the feeling? You, you were grateful you're here Ver and not there? Very grateful, yeah, right. definitely. When did the GEA become a part of your life? My life, it was around fifth or sixth class. So I would have been about 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was kind of pushed into it. A um, few mentors there. Andy Moran was a big one. He played a big part of it and still plays a big part in my life. Just out, not in football, outside of football too. Um, so between him and a few other coaches, um, Paul McHugh, Desi Lynch, that were coming in from the club, um, coaching our schools team, kind of asked me to stick with it and then push me onto the club side of it. Um, I didn't want to, I was no good at it, didn't grasp the rules, didn't get any of that. Um, but they stuck with me luckily and um, I ended up doing okay out of it. How big of influence was Andy? Huge. Really? Yeah, like I, I, I thank him in most of the things I do, I, I mention him in most of the things I do, but I'm probably still not doing justice to what he's done for me. And that's just not on the pitch, it's outside of the pitch. There was times I needed physio, he's drove me to physio, um, do you know, so anything that I've needed outside of football, he's done it. Um, so it's somebody I'm very grateful to have there as a mentor. GEA for you? Um, yeah, I suppose it's, it's probably the same. You Is know, it? fifth, sixth class. Um, you know, in primary school we're allowed, like, when you get a little bit older in, in our primary school, you're allowed to go and uh, learn, like, play GEA. So, you know, I was excited, like, fifth, fifth class, you know, you're allowed to go across the road, you're allowed to train GEA. And we had a lad named Jim Dalton who used to come in and he used to, you know, just train us or whatever. So I hadn't a clue what the sport was, but he kind of introduced it to me. And ever since he introduced the sport, like, you know, just hooked on to me. And I, I loved it. Like, you know, I, obviously I had soccer as well, but the GA just kind of stuck with me. 
Uh, you, you mentioned like uh, influences and people you look up to. Like my grandfather, Tony, he used to, he's from Fermanagh and uh, he was the kind of the guy that really made me want to pick GA over soccer. And he was the guy that, you know, you go, you go, you go home after a game and he'd be, he'd tell you the truth, he'd tell you the honest truth about whether you were good, you were bad, what you need to work on. And, you know, it's people like that that really, you know, made it stick with me. Often I'm curious to know what people's experience of coming to this country for the first time are and whether there's a sense of, we love to describe ourselves as being really welcoming and open and friendly and geez, you couldn't say a bad word about the Irish people. Did you have experiences of not feeling welcomed? Yeah, like uh, one of the most, like something that still sticks out to me now was in primary school. Um, I just remember, like we were all kids at the time, but I remember these two kids coming over to me as a little kid and, you know, we were playing a soccer game and I was, I was good at soccer because all, all I did was soccer and I was good at it and I was, you know, doing skills and not nuts and whatever. And then after the game, the two kids came over and were like, you know, why don't you F off back to where you came from? You know, and it was something that, you know, hit me. I don't know, it hit me in a different way, in a weird way, because I was like, I was kind of stunned. I was like, geez, am I not wanted here? You know, I felt like these two lads said it to me. Does that mean everyone in the whole school doesn't want me here? And I didn't know what to do. You know, you panic and you start crying. And you like, you know, you, you couldn't catch, catch your breath. You just didn't know what to do. It was something that just hit you so shockingly. But um, yeah, that was the first ever experience that I experienced kind of racism, not racism, but kind of, I don't know what way you call it, but um, yeah, it hit hard. That was the first time ever. And after that, you know, I'm actually still, still friends with those lads these days. They apologized and they knew they were in the round. So, yeah. When something like that happens, yeah. are, are, you, are you surrounded by people who are, are supportive? Are they understanding or were people dismissive of this? Yeah, I suppose, like, it has never happened before in a, in a school, you know, so the teachers didn't know what to do, you know, they, they, were, they were stunned by it as well, they didn't know what to do, they didn't have a certain way of, you know, making me feel better, they could give out to the kid for saying not to do that, but they didn't know how to say to me, you know, it's okay, you know, you are wanted here, they didn't know how to do that, but I had to get that when I went home, you know, my family reassured me that it's all right. And it was dealt with, obviously, but yeah, they just reassured me. So back then it was my family that reassured me other than people who were around at the time. Can you relate to any of those types of experiences? Um, on the pitch, I've had a few incidents outside of it. When we first moved over, um, obviously you're always going to have the small minority there, do you know? Um, like walking through the town, you'd have people coming out of bars and they'd be hurling abuse at you across the road and you're a child, you might be going up to get bread or milk and you don't know what's happening, you're kind of like, I'm just minding my own business here. I'm not even saying anything to you guys, you know. And then on the pitch, I've had one or two instances. But on the other hand, where Baidu said he had, didn't have the sports structure, my club and my coaches were actually brilliant. They got in around me. I didn't have to react to anything, you know. And they made me feel welcomed, which Baidu didn't feel. I was, I was comforted at the time, um, which was which probably made the difference for me in playing the sport and sticking with the sport. Whereas if I would have had a negative experience with that at the time, I probably could have stepped away and not looked back at it, you know. Um, so I think the sports structure there was me was huge. That, that's a that's a strong statement. Like so, if the supports hadn't been in place, or if people hadn't responded the way that they did, you, you could possibly have stepped away. Definitely, like as a child, yeah. like um, you, you want to do something because it's fun and enjoyable. But yeah. then suddenly, if that fun and enjoy, enjoyment is taken out of it because somebody's abusing you for for no apparent reason and there's nothing done about it, and you're not getting the support that you need. Um, I think it can leave a very negative uh, impact on, on, a, on a young individual, especially. Did you have other experiences where you did feel supported? Um, like, no, like, you know, it wasn't like I wasn't, like, it wasn't like I wasn't supported at all, right? Mm. That incident happened and literally a few weeks or a few weeks later, it was sorted out. You know, we, like, the parents met each other and everyone, you know, sorted out. They made, they made sure that the, the kids knew what they said was wrong. You know, they were only a little kids, so they knew what was wrong and they, they realised themselves they knew what was wrong. So after that then, you know, it wasn't like, I realised that a lot of people around the area really did care about me and they cared that I was there and they really did look after me. Just like you said, you had that support. It happened then after that. It happened that, you know, in the school I was, 
you know, I was wanted, I knew I was wanted there and people were really behind me and people were kind of driving me towards GAA as well and trying to, you know, be that support and that as well. So like the whole community, I knew I was so welcome there, even being the only black person there, I was very welcomed as well. So you were the only black person there, so you had no role models in the GAA yeah. at the time? No, no. I had I had a role model um, like that I look up to because he's from my own club, John Kane. And, you know, he, he has an odds there as well. Yeah. And he played for Westmead, he played cornerback, I played cornerback, you know. He was someone that I really wanted to look up to and aspire to be. And he was one of my coaches growing up as well. And he was my role model. But as he said, I didn't have a role model that looked like me. You know, I didn't have someone um, that, you know, was the same colour as me and could see that he's doing well and I wanted to do what he did. I didn't have that, but... Even the way I asked that question there, it, I, I, am I making more of it than I should? Is, is visibility an important thing for a community? I feel like it can be, yeah. I feel like it can be. Um, I feel like it, it could, like, it might not have to be, but, you know, if you see someone doing something and they look like you and they, they have the same hairstyle and look exactly like you'd look like, you feel like it's okay, I can do that as well. Yeah. You know, if you don't see, if it's the same with the GAA, a lot of, that's why, you know, the GAA, there's very, there's very little, um, you know, different, different cultures playing the GAA because they don't see other people doing it, so they don't want to. Soccer, they see all the black players playing soccer, the white, all the age, whatever, they want to play it as well. And I feel like, you know, if you see someone that looks like you, you really want to, Copy, not copy them, but want to be like, just like them as well. You're, you're nodding there. Oh, definitely. I, I couldn't agree more with them. Um, mm -hmm. When you're growing up, you want to see somebody of your of your uh, culture or your background that you can aspire to be. Um, like the campaign run for the ladies last year and the girls, if you can't see it, you can't be it. It's the ex ex exact same in our case, you know. Um, when you're looking up as a child, you need to be able to see somebody there that you want to aspire to be. Like young kids looking up to be Killian O'Connor or Andy Moore or so on and so forth. Who did, who did they look up to be? There's no Baidu's before, you know, there was no Zach Maradis or no Lee Chins. They've only recently come about. I think we need to be able to see more people from minor backgrounds in the media and on TV screens so kids can look up and be like, I'm from Pakistan, he's from Pakistan, I want to be like him, you know, um, and maybe cr create a path for themselves. So I think it's, it's very important. Can more be done to bring that about, do you think? Um, I think previously there wasn't a lot of people involved in the sport, whereas now there's a lot more involved. Like before, you wouldn't have had Baidu playing for Westmeath. You've got Zach Morali that played for Leitrim. Yeah. You know, there's guys there that could be utilised and should be utilised, so other kids from other backgrounds can look up and feel like they can uh, achieve something in the sport. Anything? Yeah, like you said, can more be done? Yeah. Um, I feel like it's been done now. You know, like events like this. Uh, are so important, you know, what the, what Super Valley are doing are so important, you know, to, to bring community together, to bring people who don't feel like they're part of the community into the community. And I say that's so important as well. And as you said, it's great to have someone to look up to, to see them just like you, you know, and to aspire to be just like them as well, you know, so I think that's so important too. And the, for the sounds of listening to both of you, it's probably fair to say that Sports or the GEA, but sports certainly played a very prominent role in you being made to feel welcome, feeling welcome, integrating into Irish life. That's yeah, one hundred percent for me anyway. Definitely was. My yeah. my life has revolved around sport. Being honest, um, really. Yeah, well, like I went to college in DCU, uh, got a scholarship in in DCU for GEA, and um, so that was football again. After that, I set up a sportswear business. Uh, m mostly in GA, and um, that's again sport related. Doing a master's in TU Dublin, got a sports scholarship again. It's like my educated education, my work, and then obviously my life outside of education and work, my sports. All three things revolve around the one thing, which is sports in the GA. GA is for everyone. There's a place for everyone. I think I've heard you say that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, like I think there's a slogan where we all belong, and I couldn't agree with that anymore. Is that message out there wide enough? Do you think? It's slowly getting out there, as Baidu said, things like yeah. this, um, events like this, uh, Super Values Partnership and um, campaign this year is really going to help to push it on. Like, GE are improving the work that Jer Jer McTavish is doing. It's, it's slowly getting uh, coaches and players.
players educated, um, but it's, it's slowly coming about and it's good to see. So I asked you a while ago, did you look at anyone and say, and, and see yourself in them as a role model of what you could achieve? There are youngsters in this country now who may look at you and see themselves in you both and think, well, look what they did. I can do that. Uh, like, are you aware of the influence or the impact that what you've both done on the field is potentially having to other kids? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Like, um, for me, like, I love, you know, getting a message off a kid, um, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook saying, you know, oh man, I, I love what you're doing or whatever. Really? I love, you know, the fact that you're playing for Westmead. I want to do that too. I want to, even if they're not from Westmead, I had a kid from Waterford texting me and it's like, oh, you know, I can't wait to get onto my hurling team. You know, I can't wait to start playing. I'm inspired because of you. And it's, so, it's, a, it's, you know, it's a message. For me, it's, it, it's you know, heartwarming for me to hear that. And it's unbelievable for me to hear them wanting to aspire to be, do something that I'm doing as well, you know, so definitely it's for me. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, very touching life, Baidu said, you know, we're lucky enough to have an opportunity um, from ourselves, from our own success, to make a difference for others. And if we can do that to even one person, that'll mean a lot to me, you know. In, in my case, Andy made a difference to one person, that was me. If I can emulate that, suddenly that'll have a roller coaster effect and then you could have 10, 20, 30, 40 more people, you know. So that's what I'd like to do in, uh, in this um, space. Wow. Thanks both of you for coming in to chat to us. It was great talking to you both. Thanks a million. Thanks, Thanks a million, million for having us. Thank you. Cheers, yeah. lads. Appreciate it. Nice one.